Isaiah chapter number 40. God is aware, God is able, and God is available this morning. Isaiah chapter number 40. Beginning in verse number 27. Isaiah 40 in verse number 27. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, and there is no searching of his understanding? He give power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Praise God for His Word. Praise God for His promises. Praise God for His touch in our lives. Praise God for His knowledge of us. In the good times and the bad times and the sad times and the happy times, God is aware, God is able, and God is available. One little footnote, I want you to notice verse number 31. That's not where our text is, but there's about a half a message there that I want to throw in real quick. It's uh, Notice the order of that verse. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They'll fly to begin with. You're just flying around, zooming from one place to another, flying through crisis to crisis to crisis. And then we learn as we walk with the Lord and as we wait on the Lord, then we learn to run. We, we come down from the flying and we just start to run a little bit. And then as we continue to wait on the Lord and continue to grow in the Lord and continue to process His ways and continue to understand His ways in our life, then we begin to walk with the Lord. And there was a guy in the Old Testament, chapter 5 of the book of Genesis, called Enoch. And the Bible says that he walked with God. And he was not, for God took him. So when we finally get off the flight, and we slow down to the run, and then on that day to day when we begin to walk with the Lord. See, we, we look at it it's a little bit backwards. We, we think we ought to walk and run and then fly. And that's the way it ought to be. But typically in our Christian lives, we start off all up here just, just flying around. And then we begin, we we slow down a little bit. We're we're still just getting, we're still just running from helter skelter, running back and forth. But then we begin to just wait on the Lord. Just chill out on God. Let Him do what He is go good at doing. He knows your car was broke down, fall down before it ever broke down. He knew how much money you had in your pocket before you counted it. He knew what your doctor was going to say. He knew he knew all about your opportunities. God is aware. What? Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? Look at back up at verse number twenty-seven and say, "O Jacob, and speaking, why do you say, Jacob? Why, what, Jacob, what, what, Israel? Why do you say that your God is hid from you? Why do you say that God's judgment? Why do you, what do you say? Do you not know that God is aware? Do you not know? Have you not known? Have you not heard? Do do you think you're, you're you surprised God this morning?" Do you think that bill that came in the mailbox that you weren't expecting, that God didn't know about it? Do you think God didn't know about your challenges before you ever had a challenge? I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. God knows all about your opportunities. God knows all about your challenges. God knows all about your your struggles and your strifes and your discontentments. God knows every single thing there is about your life to be to be known. God is aware. The very hairs on your head are numbered. A sparrow doesn't even fall to the ground without God knowing about it. Do don't you know? Have you not heard? Have you not known that God is aware of your problem? God knows when your light bill is due better than you do. God knows when your Dodge is broke down better than you do. God knows when your bathroom ain't got a commode in it better than you do. God knows when your school check ends better than you do. God knows when your your situation and your circumstance is finished and finalized better than you do. God is aware of every single aspect. The Bible says His eyes roam to and fro on the earth. 
God says that, that, that we are the apple of His eyes. God's, God, God knows all about our challenges. You ever, <laughs> you ever get caught up in trying to explain things to God? Now God, you know. God, you remember now, I have a this and I have a that. God, God, remember God, you said, God is aware. God knows all about your troubles. God knows all about your trials. God knows all about the circumstances and situations that arise in your life. It's not a surprise to God when your Ford broke down. It's not a surprise to God when your, when your light bill was more than you thought it should be. It's not a surprise to God when you got that report from the doctor. It's not a surprise to God when the Tuesday night council meeting was over. It's not a surprise to God when you got that new challenge and that new problem. God is aware. And I'll throw in a little flip mode with that. God cares about what He's aware of. It doesn't start with an A, but it fits real good. God is aware of your problems and God cares about your problems. Have you not known? Have you not heard? That the everlasting... We, we seem to forget sometimes that God has forgotten about us. You know, last book of Lamentations, the last verse of Lamentations. God's done with you. He don't like you no more, remember? No, God is not done with you at all. The Bible says that He's begun a good work and you will complete it. If God started something in your life, He'll finish something in your life. If God opens a door for you in your life, it's not the elevator shaft. The elevator is there. You can step in with confidence. If God opens a door into your life, you can step through that door with confidence knowing that God is aware of what you need in your life. God knows how many groceries you need in a week. God knows how much money it takes to pay your light bill. God knows how many miles to the gallon your car gets. God knows how many pedals you have to turn on your bicycle to get back and forth to work. God knows all about your life. God knows the struggles you've got with an ex-mate. God knows the struggles you've got with an employer. God knows the struggles you have with a co-worker. God knows God is aware of what's going on in your life and God cares about what's going on in your life. We get to the place in our life sometimes where we're bombarded with everything and we do like the disciples did out on the boat. Don't you even care that we're drowning out here? Don't you even care that we're perishing? If Jesus is sleeping on the same boat that's going down, don't you think He's got it? I mean, if Jesus is comfortable enough in your situation to take a nap, don't you think He can handle it? Amen. <laughs> you guess. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you think about it. Jesus was sleeping on the same boat that they thought was going down. If the boat was going down, He's going to be the first one to get wet because He's down in the bottom of the ship. And everybody that knows anything about science stuff fills up from the bottom first. You don't fill up the top part of the boat first. Right? Newton's theory of gravity, you folks that went to school, because Ty, he's going to grow up ignorant because he don't like school. You don't ever, you don't ever, you don't ever figure out how that apple fell out of the tree and stuff like that, you know, what keeps your feet planted on the earth, because you don't like school. But I mean, if you, the water comes in the boat. When Russell's holy boat goes down the river, the water goes over the rail and into the bottom, you know. It comes up from the bottom, up from the ground of your own, you know. But, but, but if the boat goes down, Jesus is going to be the first one to drown. Amen. Right? So God is aware of what's going on in your life. And yes, He cares if you perish, because His plans ain't that you perish. Remember, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Not plans to perish you. Not plans to destroy you. The thief comes to seek and to steal and destroy. Yeah. Not Jesus. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Yep. Right? Yeah, right? So why do we get so bent out of shape about life? God knew you were going to have trouble with your kid when He gave it to you. I saw Tiffany up here a while ago leading the singing and she's sitting over here standing up here crying looking at her kids. I don't blame her, but you know... <laughs> I cry when I look at them. <laughs> but you know, it, I know what she was thinking. I know what was going through her mind. But God knew all about your challenge before He ever gave it to you. He trusted you enough to give you that thing. Sometimes I wish He didn't give us so much trust, right? You know, I mean, He trusts Kate so much He's given her another one. 
You know? I mean, you got one. What you want another one for? Jeez. God is aware of what's going on in your life. Why do you say, my way is hid from the Lord? Why do we say, God, don't you know what's going on in my life? God, don't you understand what I'm going through? God, don't you know that this, that, and the other thing's going on in my life? That's the way we pray, ain't it? We explain things to God. Now, God, you do realize, of course. No, God is aware. He says, why do, why do you say that God doesn't know what's going on in your life? We get impatient with God, don't we? Forgetful and little faith. God knows what He's doing, but we want Him to get it done. You know, Russell and I were talking about time this morning. I threw my watch away when I came to the reservation. They ain't even no need to wear one out here in Bighorn County. Nobody knows what a watch is. Tiffany says something about the batteries being dead in the clock. They've been that way for six years. You know? <laughs> why, do, why, do we, why do we make such a, such a reckless claim here? My way is hid from the Lord. My way is not hid from the Lord. My God is aware. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary, and there's no searching of his understanding. If you could figure out God, then you'd be as smart as God, and that ain't going to happen. If we knew all about and how to fix things better than God, we wouldn't need a God. God is aware. He's aware of what hits us. He's aware of what's going on in our day to day. He's aware that we're surrounded by all kinds of unsympathizing hostility. God knows all about them Tuesday night council meetings. God knows all about that, that, that court appearance. God, God knows all about everything that's going on in your life. But, we find ourselves to Get all fretful. Get all fearful. Get a distrustful spirit. And, and, and my favorite one, God's forgotten about me. God's got more important things to do than to worry about my little problem. I love to hear people talking about, I got a little praise. What's harder for God? To cut your grass or create the universe? <laughs> I've seen your grass, that's probably true. Whatever, whatever our problems is, God is there and aware, and God cares. You know, God cares. God's able. Not only does He care, but He's able to do something about it. You know, there's there's multitudes of things that I'm faced with every week that I wish I could fix. My God can. You know, over in the Old Testament somewhere, I forget exactly where it's at, but it says, can God build a table in the wilderness? Oh, yes, He can. Can God make flowers to bloom in the desert? Oh, yes, He can. Can God take an old sinner and turn him into a preacher? Oh, yes, He can. Can God take an old jail and turn it into a church house? Oh, yes, He can. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we're able to ask or think. God is able have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither is faint nor is He weary, and there is no searching of His understanding. Our God is able. Amen. He is able to take nothing and make something. He is able to take a fingertip and flick all of the universe into the span of the dark sky. He is able to reach down and grab a handful of dirt and make mankind. He is able to take that handful of dirt, breathe His breath into it, and we become a living soul. God is able to take a hell-bound, wretched sinner, turn him into a saint of God by the washing of the regeneration of His blood on the cross of Calvary. God is able to come down from the portals of glory, live as a human being on the face of this planet without sin, and at 33 years old, die as a spotless, sinless sacrifice for you and for me. And not only that, he's able to get up out of that grave and with the keys of death, hell, and the grave, victorious forevermore, and give us that same victory. God is able. God is aware, and he's there, and he cares. But God is able. We tend to view God as a fellow human. We tend to view God with the limitations that we have. We tend to put God in our little boxes. We need to let God out of the closet. 
People are always talking about somebody coming out of the closet. We need to let God out of the closet. We, we keep Him in this little box where we only bring Him out when we want to. We went to our closets this morning and we brought out our Sunday clothes. Yep. You know? <laughs> Sweatpants and t-shirts, I know. We, we, see, mine, I don't even bother to put mine away. I just leave mine on the floor from Sunday to Sunday. <laughs> that way, it's easy for me to pick them up. Drives Courtney crazy. Look at, I can see her back there cringing. Just hang them over the end of the bed. That way you don't have to go searching for what to wear. See, it's not a decision for me in the mornings. I don't have to worry about, what am I going to wear today? I get up out of my bed, I go to the bathroom, and I glance at the pile on my way by, so I've kind of got an idea of what I'm going to wear. Yes. <laughs> When I come back through, I've already made up my mind what I'm going to wear because it's right there. It's convenient. And, and, and I've noticed, after you wear a pair of pants for a couple of weeks, you don't have to worry about shaking them out. They just stand up for you by yourself. Junior knows what I'm talking about. He's shaking them right there. He knows what. My grandfather used to have a great way of saving money. He'd wear his pair of bib overalls for two weeks, hang them behind the door, wear another set. That When he gets done with that one, he'd take them off and put them back on. You know, they aired out, they got all good, you know. But my God is able. Have you not known? I mean, it's almost, it's almost sarcastic when, when Isaiah answers this question. He says, why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord and my judgment is passed over from my God? He's almost, have you not known? Where have you been? It's like the folks on the road to Emmaus when Jesus was walking along there with them and, and he says, what, what you guys so sad about? Where you been? Have you not known all of the things that were taking place in Jerusalem this past week? What rock did you crawl out from under? And God is asking us that same question this morning. Don't you realize how many things I've been involved in in your life? How many days you wouldn't have made it through without my involvement in your life? How many bills you have that wouldn't have been paid without my involvement in your life? You wouldn't have breath in your body without my involvement in your life. My God is able. He's able. Jehovah never faints and He's never weary. He never gets tired. He didn't rest on the Sabbath day because He was tired. He rested on the Sabbath day to give us an illustration of when we ought to rest. Our God don't get tired. You wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning with a burden on your heart, God ain't asleep. Remember Elijah up on the hill? Maybe I'll holler out. Maybe he's on a trip. Maybe he's taking a nap talking about Baal. Our God never sleeps or slumbers. Our God's always... We get tired and want to quit, so we figure God gets tired and He wants to quit too. We figured wrong. Some of you might be the first time you ever thought you were wrong, but it ain't. You say, it ain't even the first time I was wrong. I thought I was wrong once, but I wasn't. Our God is not only aware, but He is, avail- he is, he is able. He is able to do for us. He is able to take care of you when there's no way of taking care of you. He is able to take care of you when the world says that there's no hope for you. He is able to take care of you when the employers can't take care of you. He is able to take care of you when the spouse can't take care of you. He is able to take care of you when the doctors can't take care of you. Our God is able. And He's good at it. Not only does He not lack in strength, but He supplies it. Those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. He's the giver of our strength. He gives power to the weak and those that have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall, but our God never falls. God is able. Isaiah is trying to encourage these people. They're getting ready to go into the 70 years of Babylonian captivity. They've been through some stuff. They're kind of discouraged and and, and they're coming up on a time when it's going to get more discouraging. And Isaiah is telling them, have you not known? Have you not heard? You're going to go through some hard times and you've got to know that your God is is aware of what you're going through. You're getting ready to go through some tough days and you've got to know that your God is able to take care of whatever situation you face. Your God is able to take care of whatever problem comes against you. You got to know. If you don't go into tomorrow with the fact settled in your mind that your God is able, you're going to have a tough day. If you don't face tomorrow with God taking care of your tomorrow before your tomorrow ever gets here, you're going to have a tough day. If you don't know that God has you in the palm of His hand and that no man can pluck Him out of His Father's hand, 
you're going to have a tough day. God knows what our needs are. God is aware. And God is able to do something about it. I listen. Some of y'all tell me about your problems. You tell me about your challenges. And you tell me about your stuff. You know, and my mind thinks a couple of things. My mind thinks sometimes, well, if you just listened when I told you how to fix that a long time before you started it. And then my mind thinks sometimes, man, I wish I could fix that for him. Man, I wish I could take care of that for him. But I know there's a song. Oh, man, it was written so long ago, I don't even remember when it was written. And there's a tenor singer that sings it. But he says, it, it, it's, I can't do all of this stuff, but I know a man who can. You know, I can't take care of your problems, but I know one who can. I can't fix your challenges and your opportunities, but I know one who can. And our God is able. And not only is He able, but He's available. Our God is available. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, our God is available. You will never knock on heaven's door when there's nobody home. That song we were singing a little bit ago, he says, it says in that last part, it says, uh, you're right here with us. I learned it a long time ago is stay right here with us. I don't want him to leave me. Stay right here with us. Just, just keep on dwelling with me, Lord. Keep on staying with me. Beg like David did, please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Our God is available. He's available for what? To renew the strength of those that wait on Him. See, if, 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 if you're trusting God to take care of your problems, God is available to take care of your problem. Right? If you're trusting God to take care of your problem, God is available to take care of your problem. Look at verse 31. Now let's look at verse 29. He gives power to the faint. You ever been faint? You ever been just, God, I don't know which way to go. God, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to do what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know why I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. God gives power to the faint. Amen. And to them that have no might, He does what? He increases our strength. The ones that can't handle it, He said, I'll give you the strength to do it. Notice He doesn't say, I'll do it for you. See, that's a lot of times we want God to just do it. We want God to just fix it. We want God to just take care of it. But He says He'll give us the strength. Even to the use that faint and go worry. There's going to be days when you get tired. There's going to be days when you just feel like, why bother? Those are the days when you need Him the most. I get, I get tickled at people. We use, we use God as a last resort instead of a first resort. Sincere and steady dependence on Him with an obedient trust and no misgivings about His faithfulness in doing what He says. It's not about our need. It's about His abilities. God is aware of your situation. Whatever your situation is, God is aware. Whatever your challenge is, God is aware. But not only is He aware of your situation, but He's able to take care of your situation. And not only is he able to take care of your situation, but he's available to take care of your situation. He's not too busy with somebody on the other side of the world. He's not so busy in another part of the universe that he can't have time for you. It's not a little prayer request. It's not a little praise. Everything about your life is important to God. It doesn't matter if it's a remodeled bathroom. It doesn't make any difference if it's a broke down Dodge. If it doesn't make any difference if it's a heartbreak. It doesn't make any difference if it's puppy love or it's old dog's love. But 
our God is available to take care of whatever's going on in your life. And, and I got news for you. He's not often going to show up on your time schedule. God doesn't operate by our clock. And that frustrates the heck out of us, doesn't it? Because we like our way. I want it done the way I want it done, when I want it done. Right? And God doesn't cater to me. What does it mean to wait on the Lord? Oh, sometimes it means some sleepless nights if you're not totally dependent on Him. Sometimes it means some stressful days if you're not totally dependent on Him. Sometimes it means some frustration and some stomach spasms if you're not totally trusting on Him. But He says, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I like to be as strong as I possibly can. And I like to mount up with wings as eagles and run and not be weary. Walk and not faint. I want to get to the place in my Christian life where I can walk with God. Now I'm not a big runner. I used to be a sprinter, but I'm not a good big runner. Since I had my knee replaced, the doctor said I can't really run anymore. But I can walk. Doctor told me, he said, you can walk all you want to. And I do. I walk all I want to. (laughs) I walk back and forth to the kitchen, back and forth to the refrigerator, walk out to the tractor. But I'd like to to be calm enough in my life to walk with God. Just walk. See, when you you run, you you, you just kind of, your adrenaline goes to pumping and you, your heart goes to pumping fast. And if you fly, you know, you, you're on that takeoff and that landing and the turbulence and all that kind of stuff. But when you, when you just walk, just, just walk with God. Just walk. Come here, Tom. creek that's over your head. Mm-hmm. You don't need to know if we're going we're gonna to climb up a mountain. You don't need to know if we're going to ride a roller coaster. You don't need to know if we're going to face a bear along the journey. You don't need to know if we're going to eat some fried chicken and homemade biscuits along the way. You don't need to know anything about our trip other than you just walking with me. That's it. That's, that's all we need to know in this thing called life. Yeah. Is we just walk with Jesus. Because if, if his boat sinks, he's dead. And his boat ain't going to sink. We, we, don't, we don't need to worry about where we're going, how we're going to get there, what we're going to do when we get there, what's going to happen along the journey, how it's going to all pan out, how we're going to pay for the journey, how we're going to take care of the journey, what we're going to eat along the journey. We don't need to worry about all that stuff. We're just walking with Jesus. The Bible says about Enoch, about the, one of the very few things that he said about Enoch is Enoch walked with God. Amen. He didn't say where they went, how they went, or anything else about it. The only two things that made it says about him is he walked with God and he pleased God. So when we learn how to walk with God, we please God, and when we please God, good things happen. We get to renew our strength. We get to mount up his wings as eagles. We get to run and not be weary. We get to walk and not faint. Our God's able. Our God is available. 
And our God is aware. Every single situation of your life, God knows about it. Every single situation of your life, God can take care of. He's able to take care of. Every single situation of your life, He's available to take care of. He's not too busy with the person across the street. He's not too busy with the big church down on the corner. Your needs and your desires and your walk is just as important to Him as anybody else on the face of the planet. We're always tempted to get tired, to give up, to get discouraged, to think God doesn't care, to wish we were in somebody else's shoes. You can run and not be weary. You can walk and not faint. You can mount up with wings like eagles and soar toward the home of the soul. But not without faith, not without trust, not without total dependence on Him. It's your choice how you live your life. You can live your life in frustration and fear, Mm -hmm. or you can live your life walking with God. It's your choice, it's my choice. We get up tomorrow morning and we can freak out about life or we can enjoy the walk. We can get up tomorrow morning and we can worry about having 15,000 things more than we're capable of doing in a day or we can enjoy the walk. We We can go to the mountains and we can worry about getting to the top or we can enjoy the walk. We can We can be so interested in getting to the lake that we miss the flowers along the journey. We need to learn to walk. Because see, that's, that's where God wants us to He's going to give us the strength. They'll renew their strength to mount up with wings as eagles. They're going to renew their strength to run the race with patience as set before. But the please God part is He walked with God. He walked with God. Just walk. Anybody can walk. Even crippled people can walk. You know, they may have to do it with crutches or with a cane or with. See, not everybody can run. Not everybody can fly. Believe me, I've tried to fly. I rode my sister's tricycle off the top of the barn. We put her. We pin. We pin towels. We pin towels off her around her neck and jumped off the side of the house. We even got us some umbrellas and jumped off the side of the house. Not everybody can fly. You know, Mary Poppins, Peter Pan, and a few of those others. But not everybody can fly. Not everybody can run. You know, doctor said I can't run anymore. He didn't have to tell me. I knew that. (laughs) But everybody can walk. Even, Even people with no legs can walk to a certain extent. Do you want to walk with God today? Or do you want to keep living in the mental anguish that you live in? You want to renew your strength and walk with God or you want to keep being frustrated about life? You want to keep going the same way you've been going, just get all bent out of shape about everything, lose your cool about everything, or you just want to walk with God? It's our choice. I'm sure glad that camera don't pan the audience. (laughs) That's the reason I took the microphone off a while ago up here. I didn't want that computer following me around. Somebody asked me the other day, they said, on your videos, how do you get that camera to move? Who's operating your camera for you? I said, God. (laughs) We've got a whole sound crew that takes care of all of that stuff. You don't realize how blessed you people are. Siri, move my camera. (laughs) Anyway. Do you want to be happy? Do you want to have the joy of the Lord? Do you want to be able to walk with God? Then you got to know your God is aware of your situation. Your God is able to fix your situation. And God is available to fix your situation. If you don't know those three things about your God, you're going to be miserable. And there ain't nothing I can do about it. Because I live in the same boat you do. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for your many blessings, God.